Honorable Prime Minister, esteemed member of the cabinet, distinguished CEOs and respected colleagues. First, let me express my regret for not being able to be with you in person today. Nevertheless, I'm grateful for the opportunity to address this topic of how ASEAN can ensure its future competitiveness in light of the energy transition. In the next few minutes, I will share a simple framework for the energy transition and how at the forum we measure the progress of the transition. How Thailand and ASEAN are doing in the transition according to our measurement. What are the biggest trends, challenges and opportunity we see in the energy transition going forward? ASEAN specific opportunities identified by a group of leaders from the region. And allow me to start by highlighting some insight from our energy transition index. We know that a just energy transition centers on equity and inclusivities that aims for a fair shift towards a secure, sustainable, low carbon future. The energy transition index offers insight into this progress by assessing two key areas system performance on one side and the transition readiness on the others. Across the three critical dimensions of any energy system, energy equity, security, and sustainability. These three dimensions must be balanced, and this is a task which has been proven to be complex and challenges, as we all know. Globally, the energy transition index highlights that the energy transition is slowing, and the loser of this slowdown is actually equity more than sustainability. When it comes to Thailand, your country currently ranks 60th in an overall score, and this is out of 120 countries, and is higher than the ASEAN average of 66. Our analysis point to the fact that ASEAN countries score higher on transition readiness and momentum, but lag in the system performance due to economic and infrastructural barriers. Globally, significant shifts are shaping the energy transition. China has emerged as a leader using a non-market-led approach to address pollution, sustainability, and energy security, while market-driven solutions elsewhere are slower. This suggests the need for quicker, more decisive action. Additionally, global collaboration on energy is decreasing as countries prioritize internal resilience. This is happening just as energy demand is set to rise, driven by digitalization, artificial intelligence, population growth, and rising living standard in regions like ASEAN. These trends emphasize the urgency for ASEAN to act swiftly, balancing energy security, sustainability, and equity to ensure long-term competitiveness. Right now, we find ourselves in the midst of the energy transition. We have left the harbor and we are navigating in the middle of a vast sea with troubled waters. There is some hesitancy about which direction to take as we witness a global struggle between the realities and the practicalities of the transition on one side and the high ambition declared by many companies and countries on the other. Like a ship in uncertain waters, we need a steady hand on the wheel, on the rudder guided by both pragmatic decision-making and a commitment to ambitious goal. As the forum, we would like to offer our platform to support and enable countries and companies to navigate through this complexity. As mentioned earlier, the energy transition requires a right balance between ensuring energy security, sustainability, and equity. The three are very important. It is a complex challenge, but it's one we must meet head-on if we are to achieve a just and sustainable future for all. I understand the premises of this symposium, and I'd like to confirm that, also from my perspective, the energy transition is critical to ensuring the future competitiveness of the region. But achieving this transition is not an easy task. Emerging economies in the Asian region face specific challenges in the energy transition, as identified by leaders in the region and from the region. These include four main challenges. First, insufficient clean energy financing. It is estimated that emerging and developing economies currently only receive 15% of global clean energy investment, despite accounting for two thirds of the world population. Second challenge, the lack of adequate infrastructure to support the development of large scale renewable energy projects. Third, difficulty in balancing 
meeting rising energy demands while decarbonizing the energy system. And fourth, the absence of robust policy framework and regulatory environment which can deter investment and progress. Now, despite these challenges that I've just listed, ASEAN possesses significant renewable energy potential which, if harnessed effectively, can lead to a future energy system that is not only safe and secure but sustainable and also allow ASEAN countries to compete in the global market. When it comes to competitiveness, a good example that everyone is considering at the moment around the world is on the location of data center. There is a huge potential surge in demand for energy driven by artificial intelligence and the digitalization of the economy for the intelligent age, which we know will need more energy. Countries that can offer cheap and secure clean energy will have a competitive advantage in the intelligent age. Another example highlighting the importance of the energy transition for the future competitiveness is the race to become a hub for clean energy solution and clean energy manufacturing. For example, as global demand for electric vehicle grows, countries that can provide clean, affordable and reliable energy alongside supportive policy and infrastructure will attract manufacturing and battery, and battery producer and more. So if we agree on the idea that the energy transition is critical to competitiveness, then we have to make sure that the transition to a low carbon future is rapid, a scale and also pragmatic, taking into account the challenges that we talk about. For such a transition, we need to be clear on its cost and revenue opportunity. Having a strong business and economic case is fundamental. By doing so, we can ensure that the energy transition not only support global climate goals, but also drive sustainable economic growth and strengthen competitiveness. Addressing these key challenges requires a systemic approach with efforts being focused on the three key areas as identified by a forum curated community of ASEAN CEOs. Notably, unlocking investment and mobilizing funding for the energy transition. So encouraging investment in clean energy and decarbonization project will be essential. This can be done through enabling policies, public-private partnership and international cooperation. De-risking approaches are especially key here. And we have seen innovative financing mechanisms already taking place in ASEAN. Improving the investment attractiveness of ASEAN countries will also be key to achieving a balanced distribution of investment throughout the region so that the just energy transition can be progressing in all ASEAN countries. Second, national and regional collaboration. Close cooperation within and among ASEAN countries is imperative to cultivate a shared commitment and facilitate collaborative initiative. In particular, constructing a resilient and interconnected regional grid is a of a most priority and cannot be achieved without cooperation in the region. Cross-border LNG network and enabling regional carbon management through carbon capture, utilization and storage are also key. Third, fostering societal readiness for the transition. Strong coordination between governments and industry is essential to develop re-employment and reskilling programs for the workforce in sector affected by the transition. This will help maximize the socioeconomic benefit of the energy transition for the region, especially for vulnerable community, which should be given special attention. Aligning energy policies, regulation and incentive across ASEAN countries can help create a consistent and supportive framework for clean energy development. In closing, I would like to support what I think is an underlying hypothesis for the symposium. The future of competitiveness in Thailand and ASEAN is intrinsically linked to the path taken for the energy transition. Through unlocking investment for the energy transition, fostering regional collaboration, and preparing society for the shift, the region has a unique opportunity to leverage the energy transition to maintain and possibly improve its global competitiveness. Thank you very much for having me with you.